Okay, let's start. Welcome again, everybody, all those who just joined. This is our webinar Wednesday series. We will try every Wednesday. We discuss a topic that's related to BIM. Our first series is uh, switching from CAD to BIM. And I think most of us are either we have heard what BIM is or we want to know what BIM is. And I will take this opportunity in this webinar to educate all of you what I think BIM is. Let's start with some introductions. I hope everybody can see my screen. So BIMWISE is a BIM consulting company. We train architects, we train engineers, we train uh, manufacturers, construction uh, people, contractors in BIM related softwares. We do consulting for them and we also offer project support to all our clients. And this is me, Chetna. Uh, I'm an architect who's, um, who's been educated in India, who's worked both in India and in Canada for the past 12 years now. I have been working in various AEC companies as an architectural designer, as a project architect, but where I actually found my piece was being the BIM manager. Also, I have to, before we start, I have to clear some expectations. I'm not here to give anybody any guidelines. What I'm here to do is share my experience, what I have seen in my journey being from, a, from an architectural designer progressing to BIM manager, I, what I have seen that when individuals and when companies, they switch from CAD to BIM, what are the challenges that they face, what are the strategies that are devised, I'm here to discuss all of that. And this presentation is designed to give you a quick but a comprehensive overview of building information modeling, covering the software information and the roles each one needs to play when we are adopting them. Now, when you have known me, I would want to see how does my audience look like. So there is going to be a poll on your screen right now. Uh, so you can select what kind, what industry you belong to. Are you an architect, an engineer, civil, construction manager? Let's see. Okay, I hope you have all voted. Okay, what is CAD? So CAD is a computer-aided design and drafting tool. It's a technology that we have been using for eons, like I remember when I was in university, the first CAD program that I used uh, was AutoCAD. And it was actually to replace what my seniors used to do with their drafting boards and with their set squares and with the parallel bars. They, they drew these beautiful drawings. Everything was switching over to CAD. I'm, and I'm talking about 2003. That's when the CAD became really, really, really popular. Everybody was moving on to CAD. and I feel it's a great tool because it was a stepping stone in becoming something that's basic drawings, basic drafting to a very nicely drafted automated process. What I feel CAD is like a knife. You can do cutting with a knife, chopping with a knife, you can peel with a knife, you can do a lot of stuff, but it does not have specialized tools to perform specialized functions. So if you can see on the screen here, I can draw an elaborate floor plan with a CAD software, but I can also draw, let's say, drawing of um, a bus or maybe a tool part. So this is really amazing because CAD does give us flexibility to draw whatever we want on computer rather than drawing it by hand. It makes editing really easy and it's a great tool. However, in today's day and age, when we are progressing in every field, we need more than just 2D drawings. We need more information than dimensions. We need and labeling. And we need more information from the hard work that we are putting in all, all those drawings. So that's why BIM. So what happens is a lot of us, we associate BIM with a certain software. Uh, so to say Revit is a very, very popular software. And a lot of people think that if you know Revit, you know BIM, but that's not true. BIM is actually not a software, but it's a process. It's a process which uses an intelligent 3D model to process 
the architecture, engineering, and construction professionals tools to design more efficiently, tools to transmit information from one uh, professional or from one uh, discipline to the other, and transmit the data from one office to the other in a very seamless way. The diagram that you can see right here, it is basically giving you an overview of how from my conceptual impact from my programming to my operations and maintenance, how my BIM progresses and how it changes. Now, if I say broadly, without making it too complicated, I would say that if I have to do design and then analyze my design, then make my constructible design good enough that I can plan logistics with it, I can also use my same design model uh, and give it to my fabricators to fabricate. And the whole process can be used by uh, my facility managers to manage the facility that I have designed. I don't think I can use one tool to do it all. So that's why each of these stages, whether it's design, whether it's analysis, construction planning, fabrication, or ONM, all these stages need specialized tools. And BIM is aggregation of the process, aggregation of the process that moves from design to analysis, to construction, to fabrication, to ONM. And we have a lot of softwares. Like these are not even, I would say, 20% of the softwares that are on the screen that are BIM, BIM enabled softwares. Now, depending on what field you are in, if you're an architect, Revit or ArchidCAD would be like really popular with you. And even in, our, even in architecture, I have seen people who are working on infrastructure projects, they're using MicroStation, MicroStation 3D, and Building Designer, all the Bentley products, because uh, Bentley is really good with infrastructure. Uh, when I have designed something and I want to analyze my structure, or I want to analyze my coordination, or I want to analyze my, my green building standards, or I want to analyze my loads, I move to analysis stage and I use totally different softwares for that. When I have designed and I have analyzed and I have coordinated, I have switched over my model to the contractors, to the construction managers, and they use their own softwares like Archibus and Synchronize and, and all these softwares plan their logistics to plan how and when they will order their material to do a simulation, to do every kind of planning that they need to do for their construction process and similarly other softwares. Uh, but what is common in this process is transmitting of information. So information that starts from design and it moves to analysis and moves to construction and moves to fabrication. And finally, when my project is complete and I hand it over, my ONM team will use that same information for maintaining the building. I'll give you a very quick example. So let's say you designed an office building and this, that office building has certain kind of lighting fixtures. Now my BIM model will have the information of where those lighting fixtures are. It would have the circuit diagrams. It, it will have um, all the ducts and everything that are required. Now, along with that information, what will also happen is I can add the vendor, I can add the warranties, I can add the energy star rating, I can add whatever information I want to add to that particular lighting fixture. So what happens is when from my design to my analysis, my information moves, then I know that this lighting fixture is going to cost me this much for energy. And then I can, I can suggest the replacement. Or if I'm a construction um, uh, engineer, I'm a project manager, or I'm a construction manager, I feel that this lighting fixture is it's going to um, not be there by the time we will fix it. So I can request a change that can we not use this lighting fixture and can we use another vendor for it. And similarly, all this information, when it's passed on to my building maintenance, they can use this information to track down the tickets, track down the maintenance, track down the expenditure. If something is out of warranty or something needs a regular maintenance, there are softwares that can be used to track all of this. And when, when I achieve the whole process from design to operations, when I achieve this whole process, I have become an integral part of the BIM process. 
Now, I don't know if I did excite you guys enough that you want to learn more about BIM adoption in your teams, in your companies, or you want to do more, but I think it's pretty easy. Adopting BIM is as simple as this. So you press a button, there is a special keyboard that comes, you press BIM, and voila. And I wish that could happen. But anyways, um, if BIM was this simple to adopt, I would not be here giving this webinar. I'm pretty sure all of you must have been on BIM already. So coming back to BIM adoption, if you plan to start adopting BIM into your organization, you need to start answering three questions. Why? So why means the vision behind BIM. What would I achieve if I have um, adopted BIM? Whether I'm using it because I want to be up to date with the market, whether I'm using it because it's going to save time for me, or there are other reasons. I'll give you more reasons as we go along that why we should adopt BIM. The next thing that we need to answer is how. Now, this is a two part question. If I would say that, how would BIM adoption impact my company? How would BIM ad adoption impact the way we are working? That's one part of the question. The next part of the question is, how am I going to implement BIM in my company? So just like I said, it's not that you learn a certain tool and you start adopting it. It's a complex process. It needs a strategic planning and it's, it needs a lot of questions to be answered before we would start even thinking about getting onto a new software or new platform. And the last question is what? So what actions do I need to take if I want to adopt BIM? Now, these will be real tangible things that we would have to do when we are adopting BIM. So let's dive into each one of these and see what could be my whys and how. So if you are a design and planning professional, here are some things that adopting BIM would do for you. Of course, it will give you um, improved productivity and it would give you a speedier project delivery. It would help you serve your clients better. It would help you because all when I'm talking about an intelligent 3D process, it means that you from the day one, you have a 3D model in your hand. From the day one when you're designing, you're working in 3D. You're not working in 2D redundant plans, but what you're trying to do is create a digital twin of what is in your mind and what is going to be built on site. If you are in an analysis or in documentation process, then it will give you certainly a better return on investment. It will help you do your your scheduling and sequencing in a better way. It will also make your quantity takeoffs more precise and more traceable. Now, what happens is, I will take an example of the popular software, which is called Revit. Now, what Revit does is, when I'm drawing, let's say a wall, I'm not drawing two lines and I'm hatching between them. What I'm doing is, I'm drawing a virtual wall, a wall that will actually exist on the site, a wall that actually has some properties. It has a thickness, it has layers, it has an inside and an outside, it has a, a, a layer of paint and it has studs and it has insulation. Other than that, it also has a unique identity to it. And that is how I can do my better, right from the software, I can do better quantity takeoffs. I can also do better sequencing that okay so this is going to be my first step and this is going to be my second step and how am I going to phase my project when I'm doing my renovation project what what am I going to demolish what am I going to keep all this we can plan in in a BIM enabled tool very properly very precisely we do not uh, have to do a lot of back and forth one thing but for sure is that BIM is a very front-loading process it's a process in which we will have to make a lot of decisions beforehand rather than postponing it later. And I'll give you an example later. How do we do that? Next, when I'm doing construction and I'm doing my fabrication, then it gives me better pre-construction clash detections. 
believe me once i was working in a project and i did a simple clash detection between a structure and a mechanical one and i got 15000 clashes in that model and had it been those models would have gone to the site without clash detection you can imagine the number of rfis we would get and number of and, and where the cost would go for the project so it does require a lot of work beforehand but what it also does is it gives you afterwards a lot of peace of mind what is going to happen on site what is going to happen actually you can visualize and you can fix it before if we are in operations and maintenance the information that we get from our bim models it helps create onm people a very solid maintenance plan it helps create a maintenance plan where i can schedule my maintenance guys i can i can schedule how and when i need to call people for my scheduled maintenances for checking of the facility it will also help me track the warranties but what i love most is that if everybody in the design team analysis team has done their due diligence it helps you track the sustainability progress of the building so we you know these days love to to talk about that our buildings are gold rated lead gold rated or lead platinum rated or we have zero carbon footprint building but how do we achieve it there are some methods and there are some systems in place. that help us achieve that but once these systems are are employed who's checking if the buildings really performing up to the standard so if we have a bim model that is connected to a uh, to an onm software it will help me track how sustainable my my process has been okay enough of my speaking Now I want to know what would be your top 3 whys if you want to adopt BIM and your I will open a poll Okay I'm seeing a lot of improved productivity I think some people who are from construction project management are saying scheduling better service pre-construction clash detection actually pre-construction clash detection is my personal favorite because if the designers have done their job nicely and if people who've analyzed they've done their job properly and if the person who's doing the clash detection has done his job properly we can literally have zero clashes in our body which means minimal clashes on the site which means really reduced cost and like really speeding up the process so yeah that's my personal favorite So let's talk about the hows. Now the thing is like I said my how has two is a two part question. The first is how does bim impact my organization? So first if I decide that my my organization is going to go on a bim platform or I am going to be a bim professional I have to be really up to date with the technology. I cannot say that oh no I would love to be on bim but I do I'm not comfortable with technology I'm not comfortable uh, using my tablet or I'm not comfortable um, uh, learning a different program you know using an AR or a VR technology we have to be very 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 acceptable towards the technology the other thing is workflows and standards so adopting bim also means that we have to unlearn certain things and we have to learn a certain thing which means a new way of thinking uh, and by the way next wednesday we have another webinar which will be how to change our cat mindset which will cover this topic that how bim adoption means that i have to devise new workflows and new standards so if you guys know about the cat standards that are being followed by various organizations i don't know if your company does follow it or you follow any particular cad standards but here in canada and in us we have national cad standards in uk they have their own cad standards i am personally 
very very impressed by the bim standards that uk has put in place very precise i will one one day i will also have a webinar on the bim standards and and i will keep you guys notified for that but yeah so we have to think about the new ways we have to start thinking about the new process we have to like if let's say your office does not follow any cad standards you cannot move ahead with bim without following bim standards or without creating a bim standards of your own but you need to follow a standard because if you don't it's the process is going to be really complex of course financial impact and i will be very honest here softwares are expensive the machinery is expensive you cannot install revit on a machine on an core i3 machine uh you cannot install i was once uh, trying for one of my clients to install revit for them and to my surprise they have an upgraded from p4s man i was in university when we used p4s so anyways so you have to figure in the financial impact of bim because the bim process initially also takes a lot more time than when it figure out everything it could be really easy to do stuff later on but initially it does take a lot of your project hour so you have to take in consideration the financial impact and if you can take the load of financial impact because believe me your regular projects will not be able to take that uh, load also there has to be a very very strict information exchange protocol and this is i cannot emphasize more on this that how important this is because what happens is when i'm saying information exchange my bim model is bim because of information because of information that has been transferred and let's say there is certain information in in model that i do not want my fabricators to see i rather either not put it or no way to conceal it because as we are moving forward with technology and with the new standards coming up everywhere we cannot afford to pass on the information that we do not want to pass on next is how my bim bim adoption how will i adopt it in my in my company well the steps that i'm going to tell you they look fairly simple but if you keep start looking at it one by one and actually applying it it is a process so that's why i say you need to set up a timeline and you need to set up a budget it would be very 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 unrealistic if you say that i'm an office of 20 people 10 of my people re- learned revit and in a month we are all bim office i have worked with some of the big architectural engineering companies it's been 10 years they've adopted bim they still haven't figured out a lot of stuff so and why is that so because initially they thought yes this is a new software we learn the new software we know how things are done and boom and then when they started applying it on the projects one after the other failure one after the other uh, complication and i'm not saying this to to scare anybody what i'm saying is that it's a process that requires careful planning it's a process that requires a vision it, it's a process that requires a very clear understanding that it is going to ta- take time there is going to be a learning curve and there is going to be a time period to it so yes we have to set up some time and we have to uh, set aside some budget another thing we have to start tracking down the existing skills so we need to know who are my best who are the people who would learn the software quickly who are the people who can implement the software quickly who are the people who don't need to learn the software that much but at least need to know the capabilities of the software so we need to track down the skills next is roles and responsibilities so if i know that and it will also depend on very each organization is different so if you're in an organization where a principal architect or a head engineer also does uh, construction documents they need to learn the software but if you're in a company where senior management or your project architect would never do construction documents 
they don't need to learn the software but they do need to learn the concept of them and next is creating a strategic implementation plan and 90% of the companies that adopt BIM skip this step. Why? Because they don't think it's important. Now, if I do not plan ahead of time that these are the people who are going to learn the software, these are this is the amount of money that's going into it, and this is what's going to happen in the construct of my uh, project, and I am ready to look at, okay, these are the setbacks I'm going to uh, face. Uh, we are sure to fail. So we have to create a BIM implementation plan. If you go to our website, I do have a blog where I explain that how do we create um, a BIM implementation plan. And if you still want to know more about it, uh, I would give you my email towards the end of the, the webinar. Uh, and you can send me an email and I can give you a couple of samples how to create a BIM implementation plan. Next. Now, I want to know who out of you belong to what part of your organization? So there is going to be a poll. Wow. So we have a, a big variety of professionals in this webinar, and I'm really glad to see all of you. So I would say, depending on what your role is in your organization, uh, you would have to have certain skills up your scale, uh, up your sleeves. Now. Actually, I'm going to share a very interesting incident with you. Just a few days ago, I was talking to one of my friends who's a, who's a construction project manager, and she was complaining about BIM a lot. She's like, you know, what's the use of uh, employing BIM on the project when you cannot even um, do as builds properly? And because the as builds were not done properly, she had to do a lot of hands-on coordination. And I always say that BIM in itself is a very seamless process. What it cannot replace is human interaction. And it's with all the machines and all the technology that we use, is that depending on what side of the project you are, if you're a designer, or if you're a, a, a CAD or a BIM manager, or if you're a project manager, or if you're a project architect, you really need to do your due diligence on the project and be it a BIM project, be it a CAD project, or be it just a hand sketch, make your um, a closet into your laundry room kind of a project. You have to do your due diligence. If you don't do it, you're, you're always going to be up. So next is my what. So what exactly I have to do to adopt them. First thing that I always say is, of course, it starts with technology. It starts with software selection and training. And I'm not here to um, endorse any particular product or any other particular software, although I am an avid user of Revit. And honestly, it's, it's a great software, but not everybody has to use that software. You have to select the software depending on your usage, depending on the number of people who are going to use, and overall, how, how would you want to use your software. Other than softwares, you also need to have right collaboration tools. So this pandemic situation is a very, very good example of how important it is to employ a collaboration. As of now, I do not know of any architecture or engineering or construction office that has not gone virtual because of this pandemic situation. And because of this, cloud collaboration has been the most popular collaboration. Uh, a lot of companies are also, you know, extending their um, uh, cloud programs on trial basis for much longer than they usually would. And it's, it's a very good time if you can pick up a couple of platforms, start exploring and see what you can use. Right now is a very, very good time to pick up a software that you want to learn. There are eons of options on Internet that you can, there, there are self-paced programs. There are so many programs. If you want to learn something, this is a very good. Other than um, software selection and training, we would require some new resources. As you can all see, that I don't say BIM is difficult. I don't say it's complicated. But I always say BIM requires planning. And sometimes in, your, in the construct of your office, you might not be able to give that much time. 
you might not be able to to have enough resources so you can always hire new resources or hire a consultant who would help you on board on them and next thing that i want you all to see is that there are two kind of proficiencies that we need to consider while we are um, switching to bim the bim proficiency and the software proficiency and this is an example of a very typical medium scale architecture or engineering company that has staff between 50 to um, 150 that their production team they need to have an overall understanding of bim but for the software they need to have a complete understanding um and similarly others but there are certain tools that everybody in the organization needs to know and these skills are understanding bim identifying the workflows accessing the data no you should know how to model filter the model data view and navigate the 3d model and of course how to print because all of us we love to print we love to make markups and sheets so at least those are the basic skills that we all need to learn if we want to be on them uh, as we move almost towards the end of this webinar two reminders what will bim replace in your office if you are adopting or it would improve so it will improve information exchange it will improve your documentation process it will make your design changes and collaboration methods even better it will also decrease the technical errors but what bim will not replace is the need of human interaction the lack of communication the lack of planning or human intelligence i think no software no artificial intelligence nothing can replace human intelligence and that's the topic for the day uh, all those this webinar is being recorded so all those who have attended and those who could not even attend i will send a recording of this webinar uh, to your emails i'm going to open the floor for questions so you can write your questions uh, on the chat box and i'll try to answer okay uh, prabhjot asks a question do we have to transfer the projects from dwg or we need to start from scratch so prabhjot we can import the projects from dwgs to i'm assuming you're you're talking about revit right now we do have an option that we can do it however i would highly recommend do not import 3ds because they kind of make your software a little wonky if you really go ahead with uh, switching on to a software there are strategies where we can we can transfer the project from from the dwg to um, a revit file but yeah we can do it we can transfer very nice question paulo uh, so paulo says in order to have good follow up about bim and construction site do we need to use different programs side by side uh or there is a single platform so just in the starting i mentioned that there are a lot of construction management softwares uh which do import information from your bim models and they do have a lot of different kind of tools uh they do have uh, simulation tools they do have tools that can give you uh material takeoffs so yes there are there are platforms uh in which you can import data from your bim model and you can use it uh, but it's nice to know other than those platforms it's nice to you uh, know the parent software the software from which uh your model is being created any particular youtube channel you can recommend to learn basics of revit so dhritika what i can do is actually in a in a in a few weeks i am going to start my own online revit tutorials so the basic revit is going to be free of cost i will send you the information and even if you cannot attend uh, the online training yourself you can subscribe to our youtube channel and you can find the recording oh so prabhjot is asking that can we continue the projects we've already started on site and then transfer in them i would say if your project is already on site let it be do not transfer it on bim because it's going to create a lot of um, problems it's going to create a lot of discrepancies i would say that whatever next project you have to start start that project with bim any any more questions okay thank you so much again everybody for attending this webinar i'm glad that it it gave you some sense of bim 
it got you interested in BIM, do not forget to sign up for the, for the next series. I will send you all the link for the next webinar too. In the meanwhile, there is uh, the link to our website, www.bimwise.com. You can follow us on LinkedIn, on YouTube. We have a, a, a channel, a YouTube channel. We're on Facebook. And uh, if you have any more queries, please feel free to email me at info at bimwise.com. Thank you so much, everybody, and hope you all are safe and you all are healthy. Bye-bye.